When I was assigned this mission, I was puzzled at first. A consortium. Rare diseases. I knew nothing about rare diseases. In fact, about 7,000 of them affect or will affect almost 30 million people in the EU alone. 30 million, I thought. Wow. That's about 30 times the population of Brussels. I decided to start with Ruxandra Drakia Akli at the European Commission as she launched the idea. Impressive scientific background and a very busy person. Bye bye, Jane. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Bye. Uh, in fact, this was Jane Peterson from the NIH. Um, and as we've discussed before uh, about how the idea came, it was in a discussion with Francis Collins that took place in May of 2010. He was intrigued. Uh, and as a consequence, by October, we had our Reykjavik meeting, participating there, funding agencies, for instance, uh, the Spanish funding agency was the first to join officially the consortium, uh, small and large industry, uh, charities, Association Française contre la Myopathie, or the Italian Teleton, and patient organizations, very importantly, uh, discussing the goals uh, of the consortium, 200 new therapies and uh, a diagnostic modality for most rare diseases by 2020. Quite an accomplishment. Let's see. Many national agencies, all funding bodies in the executive committee, a clear presence of the private sector. Actually, whoever dedicates $10 million to research over five years can be part of the consortium. Right. The Spanish funding agency was the first to sign in. I would meet them first. Dr. De Andres strongly believes that participating in the consortium gives a higher dimension to Spanish public research in the field. As he didn't have much time, he introduced me to his colleague, Professor Segovia. Well, the international consortium came in the right moment for us because we were building our national strategy on rare diseases, including research, including registries, are part of this strategy, which was also part of the international initiative, which could provide us with much more effectiveness of our investment and to um, uh, links so that the, the national strategy could be much more sustainable in time. Hmm. It makes sense having national research funding agencies in the consortium. But Roxandra also mentioned charities and the Italian telephone. I thought charities were just about raising money. I was wrong. Teleton has a charity, has a very important alliances uh, with pharmaceutical and biotech companies because they have an essential and crucial role in developing uh, the therapeutic approaches and bringing the results to patients. Other models are also important and possible. For instance, Geneton in France are developing their own facilities to uh, develop uh, their uh, cures. Geneton is a research and production center mostly funded by the AFM, the Association Française contre les Myopathies, an important fundraiser for medical research in France. I had to meet them. The role of organizations like Geneton uh, is crucial in this because uh, uh, they fill the gap between uh, the academia, so the academic scientists that are driven by their desire to discover and innovate, and the industry that is not prepared, obviously, to take all the risks and all the investments that they take to, uh, from a good idea to a, a therapy that can be administered to patients. Patients. Since I was in Paris, I went to meet Beatrice de Morlo from Eurodis, which represents more than 500 European patients associations. La voix des patients est vraiment essentielle dans un consortium mondial comme celui que nous sommes en train de créer. Pour nous, c'est absolument clé que les patients soient guéris. Donc 200 nouvelles thérapies d'ici 2020, c'est quelque chose de très important auquel j'attache mon attention. Still, why would industry be interested in selling therapies to a very limited number of patients? The answer came with Segolene Amy when I visited Orphanet, another very impressive initiative which collects and shares on its websites all available data regarding more than 4,000 rare diseases in 38 countries. 
In the past, uh, pharmaceutical industry was only interested by blockbusters, but now they are shifting to towards rare diseases because these diseases, which were often in the past, are now model diseases and are driver of innovation. To feel that sense of innovation, I went to see Procensa, a young Dutch company working on RNA modification. They're also part of the consortium. We do that through very solid and strong partnerships with a variety of players. On the one hand, with the academic groups, we license the technology from Leiden University Medical Center, but also working closely with patients who helped us to fund the company in the first years and with whom we still collaborate today, with venture capitalists who helped us to fund the further steps in the development of the company, and last but not least with GlaxoSmithKline, who helps us now to bring these programs forward in a more accelerated and broader way, helping thereby pay on a global basis. At that point it was time to visit another big figure in the consortium. But they were on the other side of the ocean. The National Institutes of Health is the world's biggest national health agency funding rare disease research and the co-founder of the consortium. Was there a more general interest to investigate rare diseases? I asked Jane Peterson. There is a more general interest. It is, of course, important to try to understand the basis of the disease, but that gives us a lot more biological information about what the gene involved in the disease actually does in the human organism itself. So, outcomes and innovations in the field of rare diseases could drive a shift in the way we tackle a lot more diseases. But still, millions of patients affected by rare diseases are waiting for a cure. That's why Genetic Alliance, a worldwide umbrella organization for patients' associations, had been invited to the consortium. I met Sharon Terry, the very dynamic president and CEO. I expect the consortium not only to develop the drugs and diagnostics that it says it will, but also to make more efficient the model of drug development. Because right now it's very inefficient and costly, and we need something new. And I think working together, we can start to put together a pre-competitive space, a rather large commons, that allows us to learn from one another and to much more quickly develop drugs and therapies. Thanks to Sharon, I was invited to visit Jaina Monaco in a Washington suburb. Jaina's two children are affected by isovaleric acidemia. When Stephen was diagnosed at age three and a half with his rare disorder, I was heartbroken and devastated because not only did he have the rare disorder but we were also given the diagnosis of severe neurological insult as a result of late diagnosis and what was compounding our devastation was the fact that this was preventable had he been screened for his condition at birth just like our neighboring state of North Carolina was doing at the time uh, they had 27 disorders and our state had eight. So when our daughter Caroline came along, we decided to use the knowledge from Stephen's experience and screen her early before birth. She too is affected with the same condition, but shares a very different life than Stephen. Now I understand the meaning of the word diagnosis. It can change your life, if it comes early enough. I suddenly had that sense of urgency. Research must accelerate. I had to meet more people involved in the diagnostic side. I started in Ottawa, where I met Kim Boycott at the Children's Hospital. She's a member of the Consortium Diagnostic Scientific Committee. She's eager to deliver, and she thinks the Consortium will help. I think it'll help us in three ways. Uh, the first is that it'll, it will identify patients and families from across the world with rare disorders to accelerate gene discovery. The second is that it will then allow us to systematically look at the natural history for some of these really rare disorders. And lastly, related to that, is to uh, have patients and families from across the world participating in clinical trials. From Ottawa, I came back across the Atlantic to call on another children's hospital in Poland where I met Professor Anna Szymanska. Anna devoted all her life to her patients, and she's deeply involved in clinical research. 
for a quite long time we were a little bit far away from these well-developed centers. Our previous situation stimulated us and stimulated our creativity to find solutions for many difficult situations. And we found and now we are happy to, to share what we learn and to share our experience with uh, people, colleagues, uh, researchers, clinicians from other countries. Yes, other countries like Japan, for example. In the land of the rising sun, I was honored to meet Dr. Kanazawa, who leads the Committee on Intractable Diseases at the Ministry of Health. I think... Um, exchange of information, not only funding, but also the research results are extremely important for human beings on the earth. So I'm very much looking forward to collaborate. Dr. Kanazawa told me that the concept of rare diseases is not so familiar to Japanese researchers. They concentrate on what they call intractable diseases. But the line between both concepts is very thin, as his colleague Dr. Mizushima explained. Uh, in fact, uh, intractable disease, which we are hand tackling for a long time, is also a rare disease. We are now starting data sharing with the orphanet, and with this consortium, if we can start sample sharing also, it will be benefit for the patient, not only for Japan, but also for the world. In Tokyo, I had another appointment on my agenda with Misao Hashimoto, who suffers from amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Misao is no ordinary patient. She is the president of the very active Japan ALS Association. Their experience is priceless, as I learned from their director. In Japan, there are three Misao is like a prisoner in her own body, but her courage and way of being positive are really impressive. She communicates with an assistant reciting the Japanese alphabet, or by imperceptibly moving a toe to control her computer. I asked her about the consortium initiative. I knew the answer would be short, but it was conclusive. Let's fight together. <laughs> 